So M&A Bank is always hoping that the huge deals are going to start flowing again, like in 2005, 2006. But so far this year, uh, first three quarters of the year, actually down globally on last year, $1.7 trillion worth of deals so far this year. Pessimism, optimism, it, it's really the same as the last couple of years, right? Yeah, it's, actually it's, it's not leaping no, it's, forward it's, the it's, way it's people not, want Not at to. all. I think you've got a lot of factors behind this. You know, companies, uh, I think, well, we'll sit around, we'll see what happens next. We've got the fiscal cliff. We've got Europe. Yep. There's no big reason to jump in and do deals. And actually, that's, that, that's, that's helped all these companies. They've actually managed to return capital to shareholders, and their earnings until very recently have been pretty yeah, good. Shocker, things so, like that. So, yeah. you know, it's actually, uh, <laughs> why do deals when, the, when things are going <laughs> right. fine? But actually, from a, from a banker's perspective, it's not looking too good. I mean, not only have we got a 16% drop in the first nine months of last year, but actually, if you plow through the figures, you find that a lot of the deals done actually are not your traditional right. uh, So not a nice ups. big LBO or a... Or, or hostile, whatever. even an agreed deal. Actually, looking through the top 30 numbers, we've got this, these numbers from our, our data guys upstairs. Right. It shows that actually um, only 10 of the top 30 deals were traditional uh, tie-ups. The other 20 right. are things like... Well, I mean, the top deal is Extrata, which is uh, the Extrata Glencore, where right. I think Glencore already owns 34% of Extrata. So you've got right. deals like that where companies... And you've got some, some nationalizations. Yeah, too. you've got, I think, the second or third biggest deal is, is the nationalization of Bankia in Spain. Right. Uh, you've got the, the TEPCO deal in uh, Japan on the, right. on the nuclear front. So And they, they, these are not the kind of deals that make bank, bankers whopping fees. Well, right? not necessarily, but I mean, certainly the nationalizations yeah. don't. But also, you've got some spin-offs in there. And spin-offs, who gets paid for a spin-off? Is it the M&A bank? or is it the equities bankers? Well, arguably right. it's both, but right. you know, you're going to have to split those fees. So compared to last year, where 20 of the top 30 right. deals were, uh, were traditional M&A. So but, you know, we, we do have some coming through still today, and we've got, as, as Robert Siren's been looking yep. at, we've got this, uh, this uh, Deutsche Telekom spinning off or selling right. a T-Mobile into uh, Metro Right, PCS well, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. So a glimmer of hope for a, a few M&A mm -hmm. bankers here with this one. So T-Mobile and AT&T's tie-up got nixed. Mm -hmm. Deutsche Telekom has this asset it doesn't really want, T-Mobile yeah, USA, it's, it's, and this is a, a step forward. It's right? kind of a small like, shotgun wedding that's almost a you know, consolation prize. So what are they doing? Price. They're reversing T-Mobile USA? Yeah, they're the reversing list. into 75% of um, Metro PCS, PCS right. and the reason is that they want to do something with this. They, they know they can't hold it in the U.S. because it's very subscale. It doesn't have like, right. you know, it doesn't have the iPhone, so why would most people don't really want this? Right, this so you've network. got AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon, and then you've got and and then the rest. Yeah, the rest of them. Even Sprint is kind of way back there right. compared to AT&T and Verizon. Of course, uh, T-Mobile tried to get together with Sprint last year, right? Mm -hmm. But the main problem is you're going to see more and more of these deals because you still have the two companies. You've got Verizon and AT&T, right. and they've got the best spectrum, they've got the best handsets, etc. And the other ones can't compete. If they combine, they probably can't compete. Okay, so the M&A bankers in the U.S. telecoms at least can hope for one or two more deals coming up. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll have more breaking views tomorrow.